Well, my new Daphne's Diary is here. This is number six. Uh, let me show you this one, number six of 22. And I'm really, really excited to be able to share with you what's inside. You want to come with me? Let's have a look together. So what I love about the color here is, is that there's repeat of roses. Quite often in the magazines there are images of roses and sometimes also artist tools. So those are really great to be able to use. The colors are all uh, covers, sorry, are always made with nice sturdy card. So those would make ideal covers if you're going to use them as that. Um, love the purples and the butterflies. Must say, I just love the watercolors that are here. And um, if you wanted to use these as whole journal pages, you've got certainly a lot of interest here. And if you wanted to use some fussy cutting to cut up things like the books or the butterflies or the birds, even the sort of pens and the nibs and some of the letter, that would also be great. Um, so there's lots of material here. Just a nice sort of gentle feel to it, isn't it? Then there's always these travel pages, which are great. Um, I feel that the, nap, the little maps are quite nice snippets, even if you're just using them as labels. And quite often she uses bicycles or some modes of transport, like fun little cars with um, camping things on top. So if you were ever going to do a travel journal, you could start collecting those. Also look when I'm opening the pages of these magazines to see what sort of interesting backgrounds they are because quite often when you're making a background um, for something you need something that's not just a plain piece of card. So here I could use some of these pebble stones. I might also be able to cut this out, have that perhaps as the back of a tag and then put some plain card or something else on the other side. And then this background here is slightly mottled. So there's quite a large piece of that that I would be able to use for something. And then of course we've got these lovely watercolors that um, would probably fussy cut. Don't discount also wording. So the wording might not be a phrase that you would use as a phrase, but you might decide to use just some of the words. So for argument's sake, again, if we were doing a traveling um, travel journal, you could just do cycling and you could cut that out, um, just odd words here and there. So I tend to cut the words out if they are not backing onto an image that I prefer to have. Um, there again some. So here you've got some nice little silhouette drawings of some historical people. Those are very nice. Those would add interest to any kinds of tags. Here's another one of those tags that I would cut out. And again, lovely, lovely textured background that ties with the first pages, so you'd be able to get a lot out of there. Images, if you were going to do something there. Nice little label sign here that you could use as a postage stamp if you were making faux postage stamps. And um, yeah, another little tag paddling down the river. Yeah, I think I'd like to be on one of those little canoes today. <laughs> um, that just looks like real fun. It's a nice little sort of vintage picture as well. And then again here, a nice little teeny weeny bicycle that you could actually cut out. Um, just do some fussy cutting. Nice to do if you're watching a movie. Oh, here's one of the little images that I say often pop up um, with something on them. And then I love the background here of stripes. I've used these quite often for small tags and things. Um, if you were doing a cookbook of some sort or you wanted to use any of these images, there's a lot that you can use here on this page and then I I quite like to keep this text writing it's usually in blue and um, those I find are quite useful sort of backgrounds and things not worried about what it says um, just the fact that it's got a different kind of um, writing or a different kind of font to what we normally get you know, as a printed font it looks more handwritten here again, you've got lots of repeat images of things like butterflies, so those could be a theme that you would use. And then you could also fussy cut these tiny little butterflies that are there. There's usually a theme of cooking somewhere along the line in the book. So if you were doing something to do with a recipe book or maybe baking of some sort, then you could use some of these kitchen items as well. And then obviously birds. Look at this lovely textured background here. Um, so if you had pieces of that, you'd be able to work that really nicely and that would be stunning um, as something as a background for a tag, maybe. Here again, um, this is always a fun page. 
um, this I'm never parting with and I'm sure we've all got things like that in our own homes a lovely pair of binoculars again if you're doing a travel journal I would fussy cut that um, and lovely borders here that you could use for labels tags you could maybe make a belly band out of that lovely textures here for backgrounds um, fun image last issue the number five they had some sort of almost um, Cuban kind of drawings that you could wrap around a pot and if you use some of those drawings with that lady they would tie together quite nicely with the theme oh gosh yeah with the cactuses those all cacti those would actually be really nice now these are designed to be cut out and just popped into a, a pot uh, they would slot together to make a whole image but I'm inclined to think that these would make rather fun little sort of tags that hang out of journals um, they're nice and colorful too and then don't forget you've got loads of colored background and this is a really nice firm card that you'd be able to use this okay I tried rose hip tea the other day we've got masses of roses growing at work because I actually work on a farm um, so part of my work is in a horticultural field where I'm training special needs adults to grow things um, and part of the, my job is also to train them how to be ready to serve in a restaurant because we have a tea room there as well but outside the tea room there's masses of roses and we were having some fun the other day with them playing games and there were rose hips and I thought oh, I'm going to try and make this rose hip tea but I think first of all my rose hips weren't um, ripe enough they needed to be redder and I see from this that I'd need a kilo of rose hips and a, and a litre of water to make a syrup so watch the space I'll try it again but as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of this magazine that often there is a theme that has roses and here are the rose hips that you could tie in there. Here again lovely different um, fonts that you could actually use so don't be too quick to chop, chop those and chuck them. Um, she's got a lovely spread here on different ways of preserving food and remember that food is a theme that carries through in most of her diaries so if you started to collect some of these images maybe herbs some of those some of the watercolor things you would soon be able to have enough to have embellishments for your journal look at that lovely milk can I used to paint milk cans um, at one stage when I was back home I haven't had the time since I've been here in the UK um, but it's always quite a fun challenge to try and keep the light where the light shines and get the shading really nicely okay lovely fish and themes of herbs and things so you've got plenty of imagery here um, yeah, adding sugars and things lovely fruit blossoms peas another knife so you know for somebody who's chefy interested in food and cooking and recipes and things there's a massive amount here that you can actually use and if you separate the pages um, then you'll be able to see that if you had to fold this in half one side of your page would actually have those images the other side would be these images so you could quite easily create journal pages if you were going to use these pages fold in half the same here and I think that this has been part of the clever design of this magazine being able to lay up pages in such a way that we the purchasers are able to make good use of it fabric painting on jeans yeah the loads of teaching of fabric painting when I was back in South Africa um, so that's actually quite a nice fun product project again loads of textural backgrounds here so you know you might sometimes just be working with neutral backgrounds and need something different and that is a really nice contrasting texture to a plain piece of say coffee dyed paper um, lots of colorful things here this is an article on using modeling clays to create jewelry so I don't look at it from a point of view of making jewelry but somebody else might do but there it is okay these kind of watercolor images were in the last issue as well and I fussy cut those out and if I do had to do the same with these I would have loads to decorate a journal with so just keep looking out for recurring themes different type of font here again And then this has got rather a nice set of um, sort of recipes, I would suppose you'd call them, on making different um, body butters and milks that you could use for pampering yourself. Um, there's another theme for a journal, a pamper journal or something for a young girl. 
I also talk sometimes about how hard it is to find really lovely images to use for men. So look out for these little things that pop up in Daphne's diary. Flat pack, engine, um, those kind of words. But images so that you could use them for a masculine journal if you needed to. Or if you weren't doing journaling as such, just even for a scrapbook. You know, those would be fun. Loads of little images here. I know this isn't a colouring and activity, but I would use the images rather than that. And then you've got a lot of sticky labels for preserving, but you could actually use those in your journals. Again, we're picking up the lots of themes with butterflies, lovely um, petals, blossoms from the trees. And again, more floral images here. And then these kind of images, if you were going to fold them in half again, it would fall, fall about here and you would be able to use both pages as a journaling page. Rather fun. Again, kitchen themed things to go with journals, more watercolours, and these lovely little borders are also rather fun to add into some of the pages that you might add, just as a little accessory. You know, you could cut them out as a corner tuck spot, you might just want to fussy cut them, doesn't matter really, but they are there and they are repeated. More watercolour um, rose images. I love the shutters here because I think what I would do on this image is that I would cut out the frame here, maybe cut out what is in the window itself because to me that's quite dark and I think I'd put a piece of vellum or tracing paper behind that to make it quite light and then on a separate piece of paper stamp an image so it would look like something that would tie up with the theme of what I'm working with and if you wanted a shutter on the other side I'm sure that you could probably marry that shutter with this one if you laid them side by side. You'd have to be a bit clever with that, but cut out accurately and I'm sure that's a plan. Figs, doesn't, don't we just love figs? And look at this glorious, glorious purpley plum colour. Loads to do on this page. Backgrounds, recipes. Uh, using leaves. I've been pressing a lot of flowers and leaves at the moment because it's coming to the end of summer here. And this is a wonderful way to use a fern kind of leaf. Funny enough, where I live, I haven't seen many of those sort of ferns. Um, maybe I must go walking just in a different area. But yeah, and again, beautiful, beautiful, soft, neutral textured backgrounds. Lovely, lovely, lovely to add in as junk journal tags and embellishments. Right, that's just a step by step of how to do your leaves. Upcoming editions, we mustn't miss that to know when the next one's coming through. And then I love always these little things that are inserted. So before I get to that, here we've got a whole lot of fonts on this old typewriter kind of page. Great to add texture, interest to your journals. And then these labels normally come on a very sort of soft, pressure sensitive tape. And if you're very careful, you will peel the tape off like that. The only thing that I find is that the tape does leave a slightly oily mark, which is not really nice. So get this off as soon as you get your diary so that it doesn't come through. If I hold it to the light, you can see it is showing through a little bit. But if I were to stick it down onto something, it wouldn't be necessary. So I could cut these out and use these as tags. And then unfortunately, that tape does show through a little bit on the page there. But... For the rest of it's good. Love these little creatures that this lady's making. Um, what is her name here? She calls herself Fauna Loon. Um, I don't think that's her real name. Her real name is Paige Roberts, but they're just gorgeous. They're lovely and naive. I love the little frog. He's so full of character. So you could fussy cut the little frog out. The little rabbit would be lovely for a journal for a young child or just use the embellished borders or fold them and use them as journaling pages. Some more of the lovely work that she does. I hope she gets financially compensated for the amount of time and work that go into those because that's a lot of work. Aha! So the post page in Daphne's diary is just a feast. So when you look at it, look at all the little elements. You've got lots and lots of small areas that you could cut out and use as faux postage stamps or just as embellishments. You've got all the illustrations which you could fussy cut out. You have little sections which have text on in different fonts that those could be used on tags 
um, just to embellish a page. You've got your grids here, which are really nice. You've got lovely soft neutral background colors. There's just a ton of stuff on these pages. Don't discount them. Again, with your food themes, you've got lovely fruit and veggies normally, and here we've got a selection of those, plus your background images. So you could just fold your page in half if you wanted a simple journaling page or fussy cut these out and lay them up in your own way. Lovely sort of picnic ideas. I love this idea of making colourful chocolate and just putting petals on. And of course, a lot of people don't know that things like pansy flowers are edible. And then you've got all your lovely images here that you could fussy cut as well. More of those. Nice flowers here, echinacea, contrasted with the real flowers there. And just, just colour. I mean, if you use, if you have die cuts and you just had to cut out sections of colour, you would get the most beautiful, beautiful backgrounds that you could work on. And don't be put off if you don't have die cuts and things. I left a lot of Minecraft equipment behind in South Africa. So I'm essentially starting from scratch. You can cut all of this out by hand. It takes a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter. Okay, lovely little images here again for you to use. Lovely illustrations. Um, some fun things for animals to, to work with, but also some lovely images that you can use on your own. And if you didn't want to use that circle with a peanut butter cupcake recipe on, you could cut the circle out and stick something else on there. And the same with that little... Um, one as well. That would be fun to decorate a corner tuck spot. Look again at the lovely fonts that you've got here with different words. Nice fonts here that you can use. Lovely images to do with the roosters. Time, time and travel. More of the lovely recipes and your olive branch or no that's not olive that looks more like a gum branch. Okay now this tickled me because I really like blue and I love these sort of illustrations around this. So what I might do with something like this would be to cut out the picture, use this on the cover of a journal and then put something else in between, either a background paper with wording or perhaps something with um, an image. And here again is another little transport related illustration that you could use. Teacups and saucers, there's often that theme as well, teacup saucers, cakes, picnics. Right, this one, the lavender soaps. I think I'm going to do a separate video on this page. In South Africa, I taught people to make soap from scratch using the cold process. And I have no problem with, with the quantities and the layouts of the page at all. I just think that there's some details missing. And I think what I'm going to do is a video, which I'll put up fairly shortly, to explain to you some extra hints and tips and, and safety things that you need to be aware of um, to go with this. It's not a criticism of the page at all, it's just a supplementary thing, but I think by sharing what knowledge I have, it might make it easier for you. But it's lovely to make your own soap. And the one thing when you make your own soap is, is that the soap chemical um, change that takes place actually produces glycerine so you wouldn't actually have to add glycerine at all when you make soap it makes glycerine that's what happens it's a chemical change here we've got lovely vintage imagery um farmyard things lots of images that you could fussy cut out i love this little idea of just a piece of twine with these little mini pigs so you can get mini wooden pigs that are clothes pigs that are about that sort of size I wonder if I've got one around here. You know, I see these things sometimes and then I don't put them. Oh, yeah, I have. Okay, so you could have a little mini clothes peg like that, which is a tiny one. Or you can get those teeny weeny little ones that we sometimes have at Christmas. And you could make for your journal a little rope thing like that with a few little um, pieces of card showing as tags that you could have some information on. Could be something like a countdown to Christmas kind of um embellishment sorry i just had to think for a moment because i was busy packing that away here again i've got a nice image of of vintage horses some old lights and things again this vintage tag if you ever want to see whether you'll be able to use images on both sides of the page what i do is hold my page up to the sunlight and then i can see through on the other side are oh, this image is going to come this far so i should be okay in cutting out that and that for argument's sake and it's really nice to be able to use as much as possible 
love the orangey colors here with the pinks I think here I would probably use more of the color than the actual images and you've got lovely backgrounds here with hearts how easy is that for you to do to make your own background with the little watercolor hearts these pages for the recipe cards they come on really really nice thick cards so you could pop those out and put a different recipe in if you wanted to but still have these lovely illustrations around the side and on the other side you've got a contrasting um, set of colors so you could use those as well these are coffee stencils so all you would need to do would be to press them out to make a stencil and I know that these won't last for very long so if you have a plastic um, file folder or maybe a sheet of acetate if you traced around the outside of the edge of this pop the little design out and trace around the inside edge you'd be able to cut it out of the plastic or the acetate and then that would be more durable to keep um, because you're obviously going to need to wash it right here's another insert page also with this slightly oily tape and you just want to really press down on the page underneath to get it I tend to use my fingers just to try and rub it up if you do watercolor you'll know that um, we use a sort of liquid rubber or masking fluid to block out areas when you're painting and that's that is obviously a latex based thing but maybe not quite the same this fold out has lots of images again we've got lots of butterflies we've got different house plants that you could actually use sorry it's a really big page so I'm just stepping back to try and show you um, it's got lovely vases you could take the flower out of that vase and put something in or just use the vase on its own but that's entirely up to you same with the teacups you could do the same or you could if you had to let me show you this as well you would lose some images if you folded this in half but you would be able to fold this in half and then maybe cut it at the bottom and then you would get a journal page there and if you turn this over you would get a journal page or a journal cover like that I think that's quite a nice way to use it rather than fussy cutting everything okay so here's an example of how the stencil would work on your coffee you could do that either just with a little bit of fine cocoa powder or sometimes just they do it with a bit of sugar lovely little illustrations for children and if I look at this I think of that little bunny that was made by um, Luna Page and that would be really nice to add with that some lovely little carrot ideas is a small one um, yeah I always just my brain is an overload when I get these magazines okay she usually has some lovely little kitchen utensils or spicy things illustrated so these are always a nice addition even if you don't use the recipe as such and then look at these sort of things for labels and tags leftover days um, just look at a few of those things popping up from time to time we had the soaps with the lavender that I said I was going to make another video on so if you wanted to use any of those images you would be able to supplement them with the images from here oh I'm so sorry I didn't mean to bump the camera um, you could supplement them or you could actually just use these as is um, yeah this is just a family uh, this is like a quiz spot the difference so yeah, images there but you've also got background and you've got text yeah again I would use the text and um, the background more than anything else this I like this little project because I played around with cement uh, when I was in South Africa and I made cement bird baths out of leaves and um, I messed around quite a bit so for me as a creative person rather than making this as a stand for spoons I think I would make it as a stand for either scissors for different markers or maybe even for paint brushes um, they've covered their little teaspoons with cling wrap to be able to set them in the st in the cement to make the stand but um, you could choose a different object again you've got lovely textured backgrounds all these neutral colors here if you look at that you would be able to use that for tags for journaling backgrounds for images all right shadow images here I like those um, I like the paint brushes um, this is very dark for me and not for everybody but it is very dark for me having said that though I could cut out sections of that for nice backgrounds um, I would use the fonts definitely I would probably use that here's almost two ready-made little stamps if you wanted to use those 
Um, lots of gold, more brushes, pestle and mortar for grinding up pigments for paints. Um, yeah, you just have to really play around it. I like the gold here. These are two frames that you can cut out. Um, also, again, on really nice sort of thick card, like that. And rather than putting photographs in, I would cut them out and maybe use them on the cover of a journal or inside a page um, for a section. Love the backgrounds here as well. And in between, when you cut out, you've got this lovely mottled background and you will have the same on the back. Don't lose all these little bits. This is almost like a stucco effect or pale... Uh, can't speak now. Peeling paint. Um, it's really nice as a contrasting, but they're all very neutral. All right. Textures. You've got lovely, lovely cutouts. I've just pressed a whole lot of cornflowers, so happy to see those. Another little tag. Um, there's nothing to stop you punching a hole in, putting proper twine in there. That would add a three-dimensional effect. Lovely colours here. I wouldn't use a lot of these images, um, but I would certainly make use of the colours and the images perhaps separately. And another butterfly. Look at that. They keep popping up, don't they? Lovely little birds here. Yeah, this would just be gorgeous. Just be gorgeous as a background page. And this one, I don't think I'm as fond of this one as some of the other colour pages, but it doesn't matter. You know, what's on the other side could also be interesting. Lovely background colours, soft. Love these colours. So this one's got quite a lot of purpley pinky colours and oranges, which is really nice. And this page has been designed to make up the cells for both, but I think I would actually use that as journal pages. Um, I've got a journal that I'm working on uh, with a C theme, and I think that that would fit in perfectly. Uh, for you, those of you that prefer different colours, different images, you've got alternatives on both pages. And there's more. There's always more. It's like a real treasure trove. Just absolutely delightful. Okay. Fonts again, different to what we've got. Nice sort of images. And I don't, when I'm working, I don't always fussy cut everything and have it in a box. I will cut around a shape or tear around a shape, put it in my box, and then if I'm going to use something, select the ones I'm going to use and start fussy cutting those. These little books things are often used to make faux postage stamps. They're quite nice as sizes because by the time you've stamped on there with a postmark or something, you don't see a lot of what's underneath. And then here we go to the back cover, a nice sturdy cover, which could either be just folded in half so that you've got this on the outside, or you could actually do a separation where you take the whole of the inside of the diary out and you could do a really big sort of, this is I think slightly bigger than A4, but you could do a big sort of diary if you wanted to. So what do you think? Lots and lots and lots of lovely, lovely ideas in here. And please watch out for an upcoming video. I will post it quite soon on more information to do with making soaps. Um, I just feel I've got lots to share with you. There are lots of tips, there are things to look out for on the way. And um, yeah, so this says it takes six to eight weeks to set. That's not actually quite true. It takes six to eight weeks to cure, but I will explain all of that. So thank you for joining me. It's really just been a delight. And um, I hope you are able to get your hands on a Daphne's Diary copy. Um, and this one again, for those of you who are just looking, I'm just going to show you, is number 6 of 22. So we're nearing the end of the year fast, if there are only eight issues in a year. So, happy paging through. Lots and lots and lots to choose from. And I look forward to sharing some of the ideas of how I'm working with this beautiful, beautiful book with you in the upcoming days. Bye for now.